would you start to cut up a human body? Yes! Tell me everything you saw. Now this is it. You're finally rid of me. I don't want to have to kill you. Didn't you threaten me, Drummy? Looks like two pigs fighting on the blanket. Diabetics have healthy babies all the yeah. time. You're special, Shelby. Hello, and welcome to the Phantom Events presentation of Gone with the Wind. I'm Leonard Malton. This lavish adaptation of Margaret Mitchell's best-selling novel was released in 1939, which many people call the greatest year in Hollywood history. Gone with the Wind swept the Oscars that year and took home eight Academy Awards, including Best Picture, plus two honorary awards for technician R.D. Musgrave and noted production designer William Cameron Menzies, quote, for outstanding achievement in the use of color for the enhancement of dramatic mood, end quote. The one that got away was Best Actor, which went not to Clark Gable, but to British actor Robert Donat for his performance in Goodbye, Mr. Chips another of that year's exceptional releases. The Best Supporting Actor Award went to Thomas Mitchell, who plays Scarlett O'Hara's father, but he was honored instead for his work in yet another 1939 gem, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Of course, the award that resonates over the years is the one that went to Hattie McDaniel for her unforgettable performance as Mammy. McDaniel became the first person of color to win an Oscar. A second such person wouldn't be chosen until 1964, and that was Sidney Poitier. McDaniel's rich performance as Mammy transcended stereotyping, but still came in for criticism, especially in later years, when black actors and actresses broke down the barriers that limited their options in Hollywood. Mammy is part and parcel of the film's rose-colored depiction of plantation life in the South, a representation that many white audiences embraced and black audiences repudiated. Whatever your perspective, you have to admire the sheer skill of storytelling on display in this arresting four-hour saga. It moves, driving ever forward as we come to know the principal characters and become engaged with the actors who play them. Margaret Mitchell's novel was so widely read that millions of people pictured Clark Gable and Clark Gable alone as Red Butler. Not so as leading lady Scarlett O'Hara, which led producer David O. Selznick on a now famous hunt for the perfect actress to embody the capricious Southern Belle. He screen tested everyone from Susan Hayward to Lucille Ball and chose a British woman who was not yet a household name in the USA, Vivian Lee. Today, it's impossible to think of anyone else in that part. Olivia de Havilland and Leslie Howard filled the second leads perfectly well. Selznick was the auteur of this gargantuan production, which represented the work of several uncredited writers and directors who came and went during the many months the picture was in production. Victor Fleming earned sole director credit, the same year he directed The Wizard of Oz, a feat that might properly be regarded as impossible. But that was the beauty of the studio system, with all hands on deck when required. Max Steiner composed the Bravura music score, which opens the film with this commanding piece known as Tara's Theme. Gone with the Wind also has something that today's filmmakers might consider when building up the running time of their movies, an intermission. This gives you and the audience a chance to use the restroom, stretch your legs, and buy more refreshments. It also puts you back in your seats fully refreshed for the balance of the story. Now, sit back and enjoy the one, the only, Gone with the Wind, courtesy of Fathom Events and Warner Brothers. <laughs> 